Good morning and welcome everybody along to our service of worship as part of the Archdeaconry of the Hawke's Bay Cities this Sunday, the 5th of September. Whether you're part of one of the parishes of our Archdeaconry, part of the wider Diocese of Waiapu, or the Anglican Church in Aotearoa, New Zealand and Polynesia, or if you just happen to be a random person who has stumbled across a random service of worship this morning, welcome amongst us. You are more than welcome here as we gather in prayer and in praise. Saying just a moment ago that today is Sunday the 5th of September somewhat staggers my mind. It feels like only yesterday that it was January and I know I'm not alone in that experience. Many people have spoken to the speed with which this year has passed. But I believe over the past two weeks we've also seen the relativity of time. I've spoken with those who normally have a very busy schedule and are, are rushing from place to place and they've spoken of the slowness and the beauty of that in which they've been able to contemplate and have a peace that they haven't had in a long time. And then there are others for whom the day is structured around one o'clock or three o'clock or four o'clock depending on which, which particular day it happens to be. And that sense of anticipation that builds up to that moment and then the breath that can be taken as they have a sense of what is happening and what may come tomorrow. And then for others I have spoken to, they are in a place of separation from loved ones, whether by restrictions and regulations from rest homes or from being in different regions in this way we now live according to the Health Act and to which region we belong. They live in a time of in-between with a sense of counting down to that moment where they can reconnect as well. I believe we are all in that space to some extent or another though as we think about our physical spaces of worship and the physical people that might be gathering with us this morning. We look hopefully towards the possibility of level two and being able to gather again. But in some respects our gathering in this virtual way and the communication that happens between us is is a stand-in that we can offer at this time to keep us connected and knit together. Today we are blessed to have the Reverend Margaret Thompson leading us in a reflection and intercessions from Venerable David Van Overen. Uh, Of course you've got me hosting in the middle of that and a few other people will pop up throughout the service as part of it. Today also to keep that sense of connection or to grow that sense of connection, we're going to have a variation on what we usually do in our services, which is called the peace. Now during this time, later in the service, I'm going to ask you to pick up your phone or pick up the cell phone, pick up the the whatever it might be, even an email, and just flick the message, peace be with you, to someone that you have on your mind at that moment. Uh, We'll come to that as we come to it though. But as we gather this morning, I want to open with some words and some responses and also a prayer. Great is the Lord and worthy of all praise. Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honour, power and might be to our God forever and ever. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom those secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may truly love you and worthily praise your holy name. Through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I invite you to join me in our gathering hymn, O oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. Now that is both a request this morning as well as the name of the hymn. So as we sing today, let it be as though you were your own little church and, and let the neighbours hear it. If, like me, though, your singing voice is not that helpful, maybe tone it down a little bit so that people aren't, aren't running away, which they would probably be doing if I was singing too loudly. I invite you now to enjoy the hymn, O oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing.
It's always arousing him as we begin our morning worship today. As we gather this morning, we will undoubtedly have come from a week of ups and downs, highs and lows of relational connection and relational disconnection. And so this morning as we gather, we feel it appropriate to begin with a confession time to offer to God those things that may be weighing upon our hearts, those harsh words said, those actions taken that we now look back on and regret, an opportunity to think again of the way in which we can show grace to those around us. Hear the teaching of Christ. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is this. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Spirit of God, search our hearts. Jesus said, Come to me all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God has promised forgiveness to all who truly repent, turn to Christ in faith and are themselves forgiving. In silence we call to mind our sins. Let us confess our sins. Merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought and said, in the wrong we have done, and in the good we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance. We have sinned in weakness. We have sinned through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry. We repent and turn to you. Forgive us for our Saviour Christ's sake, and renew our lives to the glory of your name. Amen. Through the cross of Christ, God, have mercy on you, pardon you, and set you free. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. God, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Amen. Having prepared our hearts and our minds to open forth the word of God and to hear it proclaimed to us, we now come to a time of of opening in preparation for the younger amongst us. Now, some of you will have become very familiar with the Kahoot system that we've been running. There's a, an opportunity for younger people and those with younger hearts to engage with some material as well. So in a moment, or it may already be there, in the chat feature alongside of this video, there will be a uh, an opportunity for a website as well as a pin code, kahoot.it. And if you put that pin number in, you'll be able to engage in an activity with another group of people who are watching this at the moment and engaging with worship and and to have a little bit of fun as we go through our service. For now, however, I'll hand over to our readers, the first of which is our psalm. Today's psalm is Psalm 146, Praise for God's Help. To the versicle, Praise the Lord, the response is, Praise the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. With their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day their plans perish. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Happy are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food for the hungry, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, 
for all generations. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Kororia kitamatwa kititama kitawairua tapu mai e te timitanga kitene wa a hairi ake nei. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, beginning at verse 24. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and didn't want anyone to know he was there. Yet he couldn't escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him. And she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon toward the Sea of Galilee in the region of Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Many people understand how hard it is, even in these strange times, to find some quiet space for themselves. We must be very determined and organised to achieve a measure of the peace and quiet we need to re-energise ourselves and to refocus on our tasks and goals. Jesus was no different. From Mark's Gospel today, we hear that Jesus wanted some time out, so he sets off and travels about 50 miles northwest into a Greek region to the coastal port of Tyre. He leaves behind all that is familiar, his family, friends, disciples, and goes to a house, probably the home of a Jewish family in this Gentile territory. Perhaps he wants to retreat among sympathetic supporters and he doesn't want anyone to know his whereabouts. Yet even here, Jesus is known. An unnamed Gentile woman who had heard about Jesus arrives at the house and begs Jesus to heal her unwell daughter. This is shocking. So many boundaries are broken. Her gender, ethnicity, religion, culture, socioeconomic standing, all these things set her apart from Jesus and his hosts. On any one of these levels, public contact and conversation with Jesus risked condemnation for her and for him. Whilst we may be shocked to hear of the woman's approach, the grumpy-sounding, insulting reply from Jesus is not what we might expect. But his harsh response may be an expression of sympathy with Jews in the area,
who were exploited by the Gentile elite. The woman is undeterred and repeats her request on behalf of her daughter. Broken boundaries are meaningless to her and her persistence pays off. Jesus graciously commends the woman for speaking to him as she did and his words heal the little girl, even at a distance. Then Jesus leaves Tyre and as he returns towards Galilee, he encounters a group with another request for healing. An unknown they bring a deaf man with a speech impediment to Jesus. Who are they? Family? Friends? Neighbours? We're not told, but like the Gentile woman, they beg Jesus to lay hands on the man, believing he can make a difference in the man's life. Boundaries are broken in this encounter too. Different boundaries to the earlier story, but no less severe. This man cannot hear or speak well for himself. He must rely on and trust others willing to act on his behalf. Jesus takes the man aside, and although he cannot yet hear the word Jesus speaks, he can see and feel his actions. Then Jesus' word breaks the boundaries and opens a new life for the man. We don't know what the man's personal response was, but his friends were certainly very vocal in praise of Jesus, despite being told to keep quiet. They share what they have seen and experienced as a thanksgiving to God, and in recognition that Jesus is to be praised. These verses are often called healing miracle stories. But perhaps there's another kind of miracle happening here too, like the breaking down of boundaries and prejudices, and the example of those who work for restoration and wholeness in communities. Notice that neither the girl nor the man approached Jesus themselves to ask for their healing, but they are restored to health and wholeness because others acted in faith on their behalf. The new life that is theirs ripples outwards and embraces the mother, the friends and their wider communities. In our communities, there are organisations such as Lifeline, Women's Refuge, Red Cross and many others who rely on trained volunteers to listen to those who are hurting and to advocate for those who cannot speak for themselves. There are countless, nameless, theys putting their faith into action on behalf of others who need help. And we also can be theys, like so many other volunteers offering our time and skills for the good of the whole community. Both the woman and the unknown they from the gospel stories stepped outside their comfort zones, crossed over boundaries and persistently spoke up on behalf of others. Boundaries are important. Psychologists tell us that they are needed for every child's healthy growth and our relationships development. They unfold, embrace, giving us places of sanctuary and security. But boundaries can also divide, separating us from one another and make us feel distant from God too. It takes willingness and boldness to cross over boundaries for them to be broken down. It takes persistence and courage to speak up and to act on behalf of the marginalised so that lives and communities are restored to wholeness. Like Jesus, we all need to seek solitude sometimes, some alone time with God for prayer and reflection, so that once refreshed, we can return to our communities and put our faith into action. And may God grant us hearts to love and to care, eyes to look, and to see, ears to hear and to listen, 
the courage and determination to act, especially on behalf of others, to bring justice and wholeness to our communities. God grant us grace that we may be like they. Amen. Thank you, Margaret, for that wonderful reflection. As I said at the beginning of the service today, we're going to take an opportunity to connect with one another in a digital way through a variation of the piece. Uh, in a moment, some music will play. And during that time, what I want you to do is to, to pick up your phone and either text someone that's on your mind. It doesn't have to be a family member. It can just be anyone in the world. Text that person, phone that person, email that person, whoever it might be, all those people uh, that you want to extend a, a connection to or a reconnection to this morning. And perhaps including those words, peace be with you. If you're worried that they may not understand the context of that, please do use some other words if you need to. But I encourage you to pass that peace along, especially to those who know what will be happening in, in these moments is a chance to re-establish some relationships that may have grown distant as we've not been able to gather physically in church. So as this music plays, please pass the peace to one another. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring breath we could ever bring we live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever save worthy of every breath we could ever bring we live for you Today we begin the season of creation. The season starts on 1 September, the World Day of Prayer for the Care of Creation, and ends on the 4th of October, the Feast of St Francis of Assisi. During the season of creation, Christians around the world use the time to unite in prayer and action to protect God's creation. Wayapu Synod two years ago invited us all to join in. By doing so, we join many Anglicans who take this opportunity to reflect on our relationship with creation and to consider how God may be calling us further into our Anglican communion's fifth mark of mission, of treasure, and how we might preserve it. And so we pray. God of earth and heaven, we bring to you our prayers for your world and for your church. We pray for the peoples of the world, for those who share little of the earth's resources, the hungry and homeless, for those who enjoy little freedom, the imprisoned and oppressed. God of the Jew and the Gentile, in your loving heart there are no outsiders. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the peoples of this land, for those who are strangers in a new country, for those who are outcasts in their own ancient country, God of the friend and the stranger, in your loving heart there are no outsiders. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church, 
for those who feel rejected and marginalised, for those who are not made welcome at your table, or made welcome by the leadership of the church. Today in our diocese we particularly pray for the parishioners and clergy of the Waiapu Anglican Cathedral Parish of St John the Evangelist. At this time we pray for the discernment of a new dean to lead our cathedral in the next season. In this season of creation, we pray for the environment, justice and peace group that lead and challenge the cathedral and the diocese. God of the saint and the sinner, in your loving heart there are no outsiders. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community, for those pushed to the fringes by poverty, unemployment, age or disability, for those discriminated against because of race, gender, sexuality or creed. God of the voiceless and the articulate, in your loving heart there are no outsiders. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in need, for social outcasts, the physically and the mentally ill, for the friendless, the sick, and all who mourn. God of the vulnerable and the strong, in your loving heart there are no outsiders. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all who have died in your love, those who have died violently, those who have died by their own hand, those whose death has been unnoticed or unlamented. God of the living and the dead, in your loving heart, there are no outsiders. In your mercy, hear our prayer. With faith and hope, as Christ teaches us, together we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. That now draws us toward the end of our service here this morning. Thank you so much for being with us and engaging throughout this morning. A couple of notices to pass along just as, as we come toward the end of this week and look forward to the next. Now, depending on the alert levels, obviously, your parish, whichever one it may be that you belong to, will hopefully communicate with you about whether gathering will be possible and, and any requirements around that in terms of numbers and process. Uh, that communication will come out throughout the week. Uh, in addition to that, though, as long as we're at level three, you're more than welcome to join me at, at our parish YouTube or Facebook site for morning prayer at 10 a.m. Uh, otherwise, I am sure that there are many things in your parishes that you can engage with throughout the week to remain connected as well. I also know that the parish of Greater Hastings, and particularly at St. Matthew's in Hastings, are inviting all of those who are available on Saturday the 2nd of October to come along and join Steph Fry, who is the Program Manager and Development Advisor at Anglican Missions, to hear about some of the work and to ask any questions. Uh, if you have a particular motivation towards mission, then this is the morning tea that will inspire you. So I do encourage you to get along to that. Uh, for more information, please contact the office at St. Matthew's and, and the Parish of Greater Hastings, and they'll get that along to you. But Saturday, the... 2nd of October from 10.30am, you're more than welcome to come along to that. Alert level is dependent, obviously. 
Uh, within your own community, if there are events coming up, please be in touch with them if we drop down to Alert Level 2s to see whether they're still on and, and when they might be handled and, and how they might be handled is probably a better way of putting it. Uh, obviously, this is a bit of an in-between time where things may just be a bit flexible, but please do be in touch with your parish. Some of the contact details for your parish and for the wider diocese will be available at the end of our service today as the music plays. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. It is a blessing to be able to connect with you, even if it is via this digital means for now. And we look forward, as we always do, to be able to see each other in person again in the near future. For now, however, I hand over to David Van Overen to offer us the blessing. On this, the World Day of Prayer for the Care of Creation, may God, who established the dance of creation, who marvelled at the lilies of the field, who transforms chaos to order, lead us to transform our lives and the church to reflect God's glory in creation. And may God, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, be with you and those you love and those you find difficult to love, now and always. Amen. Children and their children and their children may his face.